Let me also welcome on board Rajat Sharma to talk about what he's making of the market right now. And Rajat, hi, afternoon. Considering you have been bullish on the private sector banking names, I'm uh, sure you're smiling right now. Yeah, good afternoon. No, actually, I've, I've really not been bullish on private sector banking. The only bank from the private sector space that I have in my portfolio is Federal Bank, and that's because, you know, I, I, I've said this before. I'm Yes, I've said this before. I'm positive on smaller private sector banks like IDFC First and Federal Bank. What I said was private sector banks, the, the larger private sector banks, I think, HDFC, Indicent, Axis, uh, you know, last Three years or so, they've really not delivered any return. So I think what's happening right now that you you've seen the price move the last two three days, uh, just you know these banks playing catch up to public sector banks. You know HDFC Bank has delivered flat returns in the last one year. So barring yesterday and today's move, it's gone nowhere, and that's just been my view that smaller banks will eat into the share of these larger private sector banks. And I think the excitement that you're seeing right now. Primarily is on account of what happens with this GST uh, meeting because you know there's some talk about uh, doing away with the 12% GST rate. So a lot of the service-based fee, I, you know, I was listening to, uh, to someone just now about uh, show before me about health insurance premiums. I think we guys suffer the most. The guys who distribute uh, you know mutual funds and other financial products because it's a flat 18% GST slab in the top around. You know, 12% slab being taken away really means nothing to us. But I think a lot of the excitement in the banking and NBFC stocks is because fertilizers, gaming, and NBFC. So keep an eye on all of the stocks. And I think more than banking, NBFC. We'll just get back to your line. is a bit patchy. We'll try to reconnect that. And before that, uh, Kunal, let me come to you and let's talk about the metal counters. A lot of them seeing actually sharp moves in today. Today, you have the metal index as among the uh, that is the top uh, sectoral gainer as well. Where do you see uh, the likes of NMDC, Vedanta going ahead now? So many of the stocks today are seeing a price volume breakouts. For example, uh, Vedanta today, I think for the first time in the last three weeks, from that uh, you know from from a point when I think the stock had hit 500 levels, had corrected back towards 420 in a matter of few trading sessions and you know, slowly and steadily the stock had gone through a consolidation. So I think today's move indicates that maybe that time-wise and the price-wise consolidation could be over for uh, Vedanta. That's an interesting name at current levels of 470 approximately. Uh, my sense is that this move should take the stock back to that 500 plus mark, which was the previous uh, you know, major high the stock had hit a few weeks back. Uh, the more interesting stock which has actually come back into the metal phrase, uh, Tata Steel, the stock which I think over the last many weeks has been going through a, a pause literally at this 180 plus mark. Uh, I think what we've seen is a, a, a stronger change for uh, the stock on the indicator front which uh, probably uh, you know gives a sense that we may now see a start of a fresh momentum building up for Tata Steel. I think it's likely to go into X dividend in the next couple of days. So maybe that could be, uh, you know, one price adjusted point. But I would believe that 195, 96 levels could be something to watch out for for Tata Steel over the way in your term. Okay, that's the take coming in on some of the metal names. Uh, Bharat Forge has perked up very nicely. The stock is now sitting at a gain of about almost 5%. In fact, uh, Naresh, auto ancillaries in general have done very well, right? There's Uno Minda as well, which has shot up quite smartly today after one of the brokerages uh, initiated a buy uh, with a target price of 13.50 on this one. And then, of course, there's Bharat Forge, not a pure play auto ank anymore. It's got the defense exposure as well. What's your reading on both these charts if you track Uno Minda too? So both these stocks are in strong uptrend. So if you look at Bharat Forge, it broke out about the 1300 mark, which is where it gapped down on the previous quarterly results. And then has never looked back after that. And it has continued steadily towards now almost 1800 levels. So the trend is still up. It's time to just continue to ride on to the trend. Same is the case with the Uno Minda. The stock for a long period of time was stuck around that 700 mark, broke out and has just continued. Uh, a lot of other uh, auto ancillary names have done well. So the, another large name, Samvardhana Madarsan, as well as uh, Madarsan Sumi Wiring, both have broken out and there are multiple names which have broken out in this segment. So there are still opportunities. One could look at, a, uh, say, a Gabriel India, a Automotive Axles, a Minda Corp. So there are still opportunities, but the trend is set for the whole auto ancillary pack. All right. Actually, you had a lot of uh, pre-budget meetings uh, take place. Remember that uh, the new government is preparing for the full budget and the uh, finance ministry is holding meetings 
with various participants and today the finance minister held a meeting with representatives from the financial and the capital markets uh, in order to get their views. Makari Prakash is here to tell us what was discussed in that meeting. Prakash? In a pre-budget meeting with the representatives of the financial services and the capital market has concluded and some prominent names who have attended the meeting are Nilesha, PMEC part-time member and the MD Kotak Mahindra AMC, uh, George Alexander, MD Muthut Finance, Prem Prabhakar, MD and CEO SBI CAP, Atul Kumar Goy, Lekshman, IBA and MD PNB and uh, Arun Kohli, India head Morgan Stanley among others. We spoke to some representatives after the meeting and we are getting a broader sense that they have suggested the uh, Ministry of Finance to continue with the fiscal discipline path along with the inflation targeting. Along with that, the finance ministry was also suggested by these representatives uh, to give a special focus uh, to the uh, uh, policy stability along with the transparency in the taxation structure. Uh, these representatives have also acknowledged the fact that India has done well amid an extremely volatile world and all possible steps should be taken uh, to keep up the growth momentum. Along with that, some specific proposals, the recommendations have also been made by the representatives of the uh, NBFCs uh, in order to increase uh, funding uh, for the NBFC sector. Uh, uh, it was suggested that uh, SIDB uh, should be allocated funds uh, to fund NBFCs. Along with that, the process should be initiated uh, to bring down reliance on bank funding. Along with that, some anomalies related to recovery process and uh, you know, exemption uh, in 10% TDS clause uh, should also be uh, corrected. So these are the broader recommendations. Along with that, we also give in to understand that uh, issues uh, related to taxation in, uh, structure in the capital market were also raised. Let's see how it pans out and which are those recommendations uh, going to be accepted by the finance ministry. That is something which is very interesting, uh, which is going to be very interesting to see. Right. In fact, uh, you know, the all-important pre-budget meeting with the financial sector um, has also concluded and some key voices have spoken in the suggestions and recommendations made. The FIDC co-chair spoke exclusively with us outlining the same. As an industry body for NBFCs, Finance Industry Development Council, we are also going to apply for SRO with RBI now. So what we've suggested is that, you know, recent uh, data and figures have shown that NBFC's credit to GDP has increased to 12.5%. Our lending to MSMEs has grown three times more than that of banks. So the sector has grown. On the other hand, there is a concern voiced by RBI that the NBFCs are over-dependent on banks. So they have to increase the risk weight also. Fine, that's fine. So as a result, bank funding is coming down. But then what is the alternative? So we've suggested that now if government can do some specific allocation of funds to SIDB, which can then refinance NBFCs because SIDB is anyway funding NBFCs today out of its their own funds. So if government can allocate some more funds specifically, then NBFCs co will get funding and reliance on bank, deposit, uh, bank funding will also go down. Secondly, we said that RBI has harmonized the regulatory framework for NBFCs with that for banks. But that harmonization remains incomplete because when it comes to recovery, today we cannot invoke surface if the uh, ticket size of loans is bil uh, uh, below 20 lakhs. So that 20 lakh rider needs to be removed. On the TDS front, uh, the every MI which my non-individual borrower pays to me, he has to deduct a 10% TDS. This exemption is given to banks, uh, financial institutions, even to housing finance companies, but not to NBFCs. So I think that Madam reacted that we can see how these anomalies need to be corrected. Final point was on the factoring. While our, the government has amended the act and now all NBFCs can do factoring, but still there is a requirement of registering with RBI as NBFC factor. So this is a dual registration. In addition to NBFC registration, we have to seek another registration as NBFC factor. That process itself takes time. So there is a case here that maybe that dual registration should be done away. So any uh, specific discussion which is with regard to bringing on taxation in order to increase overall consumption in the economy? Broadly, as I said, one point which I could gather was related to gift city. There was concern expressed that, you know, a lot of uh, gains which are made have, are, you know, outflow goes out of India. Mm -hmm. How can we incentivize and ensure that that remains within the country? So some steps were suggested on that. And all right, we have Rajat back uh, with us. And Rajat, uh, let's talk about the real estate sector. Uh, right now, it's actually dethroned the metal index as the top uh, sectoral gainer in trade today. But what's your outlook coming in uh, for the realty uh, sector as a whole? We've seen uh, uh, 
a month over month we've seen uh, improvement in the registrations but that is sustainable do you think yes no not just uh, registrations first of all i hope my audio is clear now uh, not just registrations you know uh, if you read about the property price trends across major cities in india you know the property prices have been uh, on the up move for the last year two years and you know it's natural for a lot of real estate companies for their revenue and even their uh, uh, you know pack uh, margins to swell going forward because it takes a while for everything to take effect on the balance sheet in fact i'll first give a disclosure we've added uh, a, a company from this sector it is not in, it, exactly a real estate player but it's a it's an epc company in the ring uh, procurement construction they they they, they take projects for third party real estate company the company is called vascon engineering uh, again i'm giving a disclosure we added a lot of this on monday we added this this morning and uh, we're continuing to add this across client portfolios and uh, you know the interesting thing about this company is that uh, it's uh, it's uh, it's 54% of its revenue is from third party uh, uh, you know making of these engineering and construction works from third party real estate there and 85% of their order book is uh, government orders and right now if you see their order book has swelled a lot it's about 2854 crores and the, the the interesting thing about the company is the company is that in the last 5 years for a real estate company it's interesting that they've been constantly reducing their uh, debt so they paid their debt they reduced their debt from about 278 crores in 2018 to 173 crores now the only worrying thing is which we've been trying to you know find out talk to the management write to them is, is is the fact that a lot of insiders have been selling stake and uh, the company's promoters have hold 32% of the company have pledged a part of their shareholding now you know given the way the debt is coming down i think it's only a matter of time that they take that pledge off and you know since the, they sh- the, the some of the insiders sold their stocks in open market the share price is already around 20% higher from there so it's a very interesting stock we've added this to our portfolio i'm giving a disclosure on that other than that you know prestige estates is another company that we've looked at not added that but yes i think real estate it has a long gestation it takes a while for these companies to and you know since about 2008 9 crash we've not really seen any revival in the real estate cycle as i said it has a long gestation it has very long cycles so it's an interesting sector to to you know get invested in right now right bunch of stocks which uh, uh, rajat is liking right now from within the realty pack kunal what is your favorite pick considering that now there's an india bulls real estate as well which has emerged as a very strong mover anantraj remains to be the top pick dlf of course uh, you know is the second one which i've been highlighting still continue to be bullish on the stock uh, you know india bulls real estate is a very high beta stock so i think till last uh, you know week or so the stock was still struggling at that 139 140 odd mark and there was a huge amount of volatility the stock has shown over the last 5 6 months so my sense is that maybe after today's up move of 15% plus move you might see the stock actually coming back into a corrective phase maybe if it comes back to that 147 odd mark that could be a very good entry point or a re entry point for traders who missed out on this rally but i think there are a plethora of other names you look at uh, you know godrej properties the stock has been doing exceptionally well in the last one month in fact uh, you know when we did a relative price uh you know study for many of the real estate stocks godrej properties apparently in the last one or two weeks has managed to be one of the stronger names from the real estate pack even outpacing uh, the returns from dlf in in the last uh, you know two three weeks so that itself indicates that leadership has changed within the real estate stocks so maybe these uh, you know three names is where i would keep focusing on anantraj dlf as well as godrej properties All right, so those are the uh, stocks where uh, Kunal is focusing on, especially uh, when it's the realty pack and Anand Raj and DLF. No doubts that they, they always are a part of uh, Kunal's list. Looks like it. But uh, which are the other uh, themes of the sectors, and uh, what should uh, uh, one look at actually when it comes to uh, investing, uh, Rajat? Uh, you've given your stock picks, uh, but there are a couple of uh, 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 sectors out there which one should look out for, and which one do you think is a safe haven right now? Clearly, you know, technology and pharma are two sectors where we are initiating a lot of buying right now. Technology overall as a sector, I think, has done nothing. There's some kind of perception that Indian companies have not caught up with the whole artificial intelligence, uh, with the with the whole uh, AI theme, and you know, the stocks. Uh, I mean, if you look at how stocks in the US have moved, how Nasdaq has moved, Indian IT sector has completely lagged behind, and pharma is the other one. 
you know two points i quickly want to make one is what i was talking about earlier which is very interesting to you know i think aisha asked me about the private sector banking and you know i've said this before many times on your show on almost every show in the last two years that in private sector banking i'm actually negative you know whether you look at hdfc or uh, access bank or indusin bank or kotak bank the last three years they've all been flat you know hdfc barring today and yesterday where it moved up some three percent has been absolutely flat in the last one year and pretty much last three years two years all these banks have gone nowhere maybe because you know public sector banks have been running up one stock that i do have in my portfolio is federal bank and i've said that that you know smaller banks smaller private sector banks have a better opportunity to you know eat into the market share of these larger banks and the point i was making earlier when the audio got disconnected was the fact that you know today what you're seeing in banking sector the way these stocks are moving up the private sector banks maybe has something to do with the gst council meet because you know fertilizers gaming and nbfcs and why nbfcs particularly because the talk has been to do away with the 15% gst slab and you know either have a 5% or an 18% or reduce some taxation and i think not just health insurance premium as you were talking about earlier we guys it directly affects our industry people who are in brokerage amc business asset management because we pay a flat flat uh, 18% gst on you know distribution of mutual funds on uh, stock sales brokerage so a lot of these companies so you'll see even the banks the private sector banks which earn some of their around 25 to 45% depending on the bank of their uh, total revenue other than net interest margin they earn it from fee based income so that's where a lot of the gst component and again i'm not going to base my buying decision on this gst meet but that could be one of the reasons why some of these nbfcs and private sector banks are moving but yes to answer aisha's question from earlier federal bank is a bank that we really like uh, the bank has done really well in the last two months i've been really happy happy about that i've had this bank since pre covid days so and a lot of my clients have had this since pre covid days so it's been a slow mover but it's given us very very good returns over a period of time and i expect this to keep doing well so even at this price i would actually recommend adding more of this Right. Okay, Rajat. Great to have you on the show. Thanks as always for uh, joining in with your thoughts. If you like this video, then like, share, and subscribe to ET Now.